Hello to everyone. Uh, my name is Ignacio Argiulo. Uh, I'm also based in the Institute of Astrophysics in La Plata, like Fabio. We are uh, collaborating with several members of the Argentinian Gemini office and also collaborating with the Galaxy Formation Group in the University of La Serena in Chile. And today I'm going to talk mainly about how the stellar halos of galaxies can help us uh, to understand the formation of inner regions of galaxies, combining observations uh, with what we predict from the high resolution cosmological hydrodynamical simulations. And in particular, I show you an example of our approach and why we think that an archetypal classical and massive pulse like the one in M81 may not be the result of martial activity. This is ongoing work, so the conclusions will remain open, but I hope uh, you can get a good grasp on what we are trying to do. Uh, so to get started, I wanted to give a short background on what people call bulges. The nomenclature in the field can be very confusing sometimes, and maybe it has no sense to talk generally about bulges, because, uh, well, inner regions of galaxies can be of many different natures. And the main view is what uh, a bulge is, is, in very general sense, a structure that bulges out of the, of the disk in the central regions of, of a galaxy. And so uh, a subgroup of them uh, that morphologically show no features, uh, like M81, are in general more pressure supported or contain all stellar populations are called classical bulges. These are usually related to formation mechanisms like mergers or violent, violent gas instabilities or uh, at high redshift. And inner regions of galaxies are very diverse, so people start calling bulges to every light concentration in the central regions of the galaxies. And when studies of the structure of nearby galaxies started to reveal the, this complex nature, uh, they added the, the pseudo bulge classification, or this like bulge. Uh, they seem to be formed uh, out of the same disk or the bar. And uh, well, that, that's why they are so called pseudo bulges. And these usually uh, present different types of, of features, like nuclear disk, dust lanes, and everything. And these inner regions are usually connected to uh, secular formation mechanisms, right? And this pseudo bulge classification also contains sometimes the, the boxy peanuts, like our old Milky Way, that are a very different type of structure, uh, resulting from vertical instabilization of bars. And obviously, uh, there are some of uh, galaxies that are considered bulgeless, like M101. So, uh, but irrespective of the morphology of a central mass concentration in a galaxy, all of them will produce uh, this bump in the central regions of, of the surface ranging profiles. And we can also define what is called usually a photometric bulge. And now I will introduce you some very basic characteristics of the simulations, aerodynamical simulations that we use, and how we characterize the, these inner regions of galaxies or bulges. And for some years now, we have uh, used some of the state of the art cosmological aerodynamical simulations to study bulge formation. Uh, this in the left, uh, in the, this diagram on the left, shows the simulations uh, of the literature with baryonic mass elements. Uh, in the y axis, the baryonic mass element resolution, and the x uh, axis, the number of galaxies above a given threshold, uh, which is basically the size of the simulation in the, here in the, in the top axis. And in the top left part of, the, of this diagram, we can find what is called the, the resimulation regime with smaller samples of resimulated galaxies with large resolutions, while going to the right, uh, we can find the cosmological boxes with tens of megaparsec size, for which uh, the resolution becomes much more expensive computationally, so they have less resolution. In 2019, we studied the bulges of 30 simulated Milky Way mass galaxies at the moment, and of the, of the Aurica collaboration, and found that their properties were more akin to pseudo bulges. And recently, we used this TNC50 simulation, which is a, a cosmological box, but, but uh, and was run with the same code at EPO, that Auriga simulations, and uh, only with a few changes in the physical mode, model. So this allowed to, to, to multiply the, the amount of, of galaxies in our sample by 10 and only resigning a factor of two in, in resolution. And I'll, I'll be showing mostly these results. So the sample, uh, we select this Milky Way M31 like uh, galaxies in the mass range indicated here in the, uh, in the, in the slide. The diskiness uh, is quantified by the minor to major axis radio of the stellar uh, moment of inertia tension. And we got uh, 287 galaxies with the mass distribution shown in the, in the plot and in gray, where the, these arrows are the mass estimates for the Milky Way M M31 for, for different authors. And 
well, and this is a bunch of the of the of the whole sample, but uh, we can notice here the large diversity of of galaxies with many detailed features due to the to the resolution power of, of these simulations. So we have a great diversity with with a high resolution. And one of the way, the ways that we use to parameterize these valves is by decomposing the surface brightness profile in the in the visual band of, of, of all galaxies in our sample. When we talk about uh, uh, photometric valves, uh, we assume that a radial surface line profile of a disk galaxy can be decomposed in different uh, structures in a linear combination of different structures. And the valve is usually represented by the CERSIC profile, and the disk is represented usually by an exponential, right? We assume only two components to do this. And we mask all the features in the surface lines profiles that uh, like bars or, or strong spiral bars. Uh, well, this plot showcases all the, the diversity of super frame profile that we got. And around 17 of them have high CERSIC index, above two. And we also characterize the sample with the batch to total ratio. The distribution we got is skewed toward lower values of batch to total, which is a, a pretty good result in, in adrenaline simulations because overcooling usually produced uh, batches that were too large uh, in the past. So, but we also characterize batches in a second way, more oriented to simulations, because these simulations give us a, a wealth of information about the stellar particles. So we are also interested in the origin of, of kinematically defined batches and, and, and how this relate with the, with the photometric batches, right? And we define the kinematic batch uh, with an usual definition among simulators, that is, we, first we separate stellar particles that are uh, have circular or near to circular orbits, which we consider part of the disk, from the rest, uh, by means of this parameter, the circularity parameter. And for each particle, we divide the angular momentum uh, component perpendicular to the disk with the angular momentum of, of a particle with the same initial energy, but in circular orbit, so the, the maximum uh, angular momentum. And this is a typical distribution of, of circularities for a, a simulated disk galaxy. And we use a threshold of, of 0.7. And secondly, uh, we establish a, a spatial cut around the, the central region of, of, of the galaxy. So all the stellar particles inside uh, these two effective radii of the CERSI component with circularities below 0.7 uh, are, part of, are part of the kinematic batch. But we always have to keep in mind that photometric batches are very different from, from, from kinematic batches. So when we plot the batch to total radius from different definitions, we, they are not correlated as expected. The most important use of this definition is that it allows us to find uh, which of these batch particles form uh, in situ and which form ex situ. And we can use this information to measure the impact of, of, of stellar rich mergers in the formation of batches. So in this plot, we can see what in the galaxy formation uh, community we call the, the merger tree. Here in the left, you have the the, the, ah, the main branch progenitor. And, and in, the, in the right, you have all, all, these, all these points that are the satellite galaxies that at each redshift uh, merges merge with, the, with the main progenitor. And, and we have all this information in the simulation. So we can, we can find which particles form in these, in these satellites. And we call them uh, ex situ particles. Um, so we found in our work in 2019 that uh, with the Aurea simulations, uh, most galaxies uh, have a negligible or, or very low um, ex situ fractions in the, in the kinematic bulge. And in the right panel, we see that in the Illustris TNG sample uh, this year, we confirmed this result. Uh, and the, the median value is, is very close to the one in the Auriga sample, but uh, well, Mostly the, the in situ uh, formation of the, the prevalence of the in situ formation of batches is a, is a robust result between two slightly different simulations. Uh, but again, the importance of this, of this quantity is to, to measure the impact of a stellar rich merger in the, in the formation of a, of a batch, right? So we also is, uh, studied uh, the influence of, of galactic bars on batch formation. And well, we do this in a pretty conventional way. We compute the strength of bars uh, by means of Fourier mode analysis in a pretty conventional way. We define the uh, radial annually 
in the phase on projection of galaxies and, com and compute these complex uh, Fourier coefficients to quantify the azimuthal patterns in the mass distribution with, the, with these n-fold symmetries. And the, the second mode corresponds to a, to a bisymmetrical signal, such as a bar. So we use the, the bar phase angle to determine when this bar ends and spiral structures uh, begins. So the bar strength finally is the mass weighted mean of, of the amplitude of the second Fourier mode within the bar region. And we looked into the cumulative fraction of, of galaxies with bars at different redshifts. We found that the uh, stronger than a given amplitude, right? So um, we found that uh, at, at, at every redshift, the galaxies with low Cersic index have uh, a higher fraction of bars. But more uh, importantly for our discussion here is that in the lower panels, we see that across all redshifts, galaxies in beams with higher batch to total radius show a larger fraction of bars than galaxies with, with less luminous batches. So basically, bars are contributing to, to the build up of, of, of these inner regions. Uh, and we define a parameter that measures these measures the longevity of the bar <coughs> or the duration of the bar because this is a, a cumulative process that we use to, to also to measure the, the importance of this, of this uh, mechanism of, of formation in the, in the formation of, of bulges. But the important question is if we can disentangle the bulge formation mechanisms only by observing bulges because uh, a merger that, that forms stars in the, in the central region of the galaxy basically has a, or, or may have the, the, the same result as, as, as stars forming uh, due to a bar, depending on the, the timing of, of emergence and everything. So can we disentangle this? We think that we can, uh, sorry. Uh, we think that it's possible using this um, uh, diagram that we call the, the stellar halo bulge mass diagram or bulge mass stellar halo mass diagram. It was presented uh, uh, by Bell in Monachesi in 2017. And, and with this and the help of, uh, of, of prediction from our simulations, we think that we can do this. Um, well, in black, these are uh, indicated the, the, the classical bulges in red, the, the pseudo bulges. And the stellar halo mass estimates are mostly from the, the GOST survey with the Hubble Space Telescope, where they do RGB star counts in the extended diffuse component at galactocentric distances from 10 to more than 40 kiloparsecs along the minor axis and, and, and further than 20 kiloparsecs along the major axis to avoid the disk. So the total stellar halo mass is then estimated as three times the aperture stellar halo mass. Uh, and this is based also in the profiles of ex to stars in simulations, this, this, this fact. And that is, and is commonly accepted and revealed by the study of stellar stream. For example, the stellar halos of galaxies like uh, our own or M81 are formed by the debris of satellite galaxies in falling to the host galaxy that are stripped from the satellites by tidal forces. So the main idea behind this, this diagram is that galaxies uh, that form their, their bulges due to merger activity uh, should show a correlation between the bulge mass and the stellar halo mass. So the gray band shows this one-to-one -one correlation for reference. And we see that there is a large dispersion. So bulge mass seems to be built up by other processes other than stellar region mergers in many cases at least. So uh, we studied the behavior of simulated galaxies in this uh, bulge mass stellar halo mass diagram with the Auriga sample in 2019. We found that the, there is a large dispersion in the, in the simulated galaxies using photometric bulge mass and kinematic bulge mass decompositions. And this year we are working with the TNG50 sample and you can see that there is also a large type dispersion um, indicating that star rich mergers are not the only process uh, in the simulation that grew bulges. So color coded are the, these ex situ fractions that I mentioned of stars in the kinematic bulge. And you can see that, that close galaxies with bulges uh, with larger ex situ fractions, like close to this one to one line reference, while galaxies that hold bulges with lower ex situ fractions are more apart. So the, firm, the first mechanisms that we try to measure as a contributor of, of these galaxies uh, with low exit fractions uh, is the bulge formation through bars. And we use this parameter, the duration of the bar, the, the color coding here. And we, we, find, we show in the, in the left the kinematic bulge mass, in the left the photometric bulge mass. And 
we found a very, a very strong correlation when we use kinematic Bull's bus with the duration of the bar, because basically all the stars in, in bar orbits inside the, the, the bus region are not circular. So we are getting a lot of, of bar stars and that, that obviously are more related to, to the formation by bars. But when we move to photometric Bull's masses uh, in the simulation, this uh, correlation washes out. Uh, so we have to, to try more, uh, more processes. Now we are in, the, in, this, in this process. Uh, and we can see that in particular for simulated galaxies near the observational point of M81, uh, the bar evolution is not important in the, in the, in the Bull's mass growth. So still other mechanisms are, uh, are needed. We are uh, now studying the radi radial migration due to, to spiral arms, considering that M81 has, is, a, is a grand spiral design galaxy and has uh, very strong arms. We may, uh, these radial migration mechanisms may have something to do. We are also studying the compaction. And well, oh, it doesn't change the, okay. Well, this is, a, this is another, way to see Ignacio, how this, yes? You, you should be finishing in a few moments. Okay. Okay. Uh, another way to, to see that the, the, the galaxy M81 has uh, still uh, infalling satellites that will form a massive bulge, but now the, the bulge is, the, the stellar halo is, is, uh, is very, very low massive. Um, so what we are trying to do with, with observations, basically, uh, clearly I'm more from the simulation side. So, uh, questions about the observations, please do it. Uh, do them in the Slack channel, please. And some professionals from the Gemini uh, Observatory um, uh, office in Argentina will be answering. And well, we have this configuration for the for the observation for long slits in the central region of M81, mm -hmm. and and we want to to take uh, these este, um, these um, profiles of, of 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 kinematic quantities like uh, radial velocity dispersion velocity and everything and, and try to compare them to to uh, results in the in the simulations because obviously the simulations are for very detailed and everything uh, have a lot of, of of oversimplifications in the physical processes and and resolution problems so we wanted to combine this with the observation with uh, spectroscopic observations to to find uh, uh, some connection between simulations and, and observations that can help us uh, understand how, how this patch uh, was formed. That according to our simulations, it was uh, probably not, not formed by, by mergers. Ignacio, can you go to the conclusions, please? So people can, can see yeah. it later, perhaps. Thank you. This is the summary and the future directions of our work. But thanks for the... Okay, thank, thank you. you. Do you have questions on Slack? I have no, I did. We have time for one quick question if someone has, we have one there. Uh, hi, Ignacio. I'm Perry Menendez del Mestre from Rio de Janeiro. It was very mm -hmm. interesting work. I wanted to ask you, I'm trying to wrap my head around the fact that you say that uh, high, no, galaxies with strong bars do not have a high fraction of exceed stars in their bulges. I'm trying to, mm -hmm. how, how do you think about this in, in terms of when we think about the creation of pseudo bulges, how bars will actually help transforming classical bulges into pseudo bulges? How do, I would expect that there would be more exceed, exceed yeah, stars that are not born in the bulges uh, in, in strong bars. How do you, how, how should we think about this? I think that uh, well, there is there, there are several works indicating that uh, there is like a twofold causality of that. In, in, for one side, uh, bars contribute to form uh, mass in the inner regions of galaxies by making the gas lose angular momentum. Uh, they can also near the core rotation they can drive stars to to inner regions, make them uh, lose angular momentum too. So um, this is one one causality path. And the other one is that when you have a, already a, a, a strong uh, spherical concentration or, or a strong classical bullshit, uh, the way you, you, you want to call it, from the beginnings, 
uh, you delay the, the formation of a bar. So, or, or, or even you can uh, uh, prevent the formation of a bar if you have a, a, a strong concentration of mass in the from the early epoch. So, uh, you have to 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 see each um, each case separately to to know what happened. But that's why we found, I think, uh, a very uh, well, not strong but very markedly. Um, market the uh, modality in that sense. Okay, so Thanks. thank I you. Tell you. Uh, if you. We can continue the discussion on, on Slack if you want. Uh, we're out of time, so we have to move on. Thank you, Ignacio, very much.